In this segment, we see how to insert a key into an AVL tree and maintain the AVL property. To do this, we are going to see a new operation on binary search trees called a rotation. A rotation preserves the BST property and can help us rebalance the tree after an insert in order to maintain the AVL property. Let us say we have an AVL tree. So we know that for every node in the tree, the heights of its left and right child differ by at most one. Recall that we call the balance factor of a node the height of its right child minus the height of its left child. To insert a new key into an AVL tree, we first insert it in the usual way that we discussed before about how to insert a key into a binary search tree. We know that the new key will be stored in a new leaf of the tree. To maintain the AVL property, insertion now involves a second phase where we fix the AVL property at, at any nodes that have gotten out of balance due to this insertion. The key thing to remember is that adding a leaf to a tree can change the heights of nodes above it by at most one. Thus, after the insertion, the balance factor of all nodes is still at most two in magnitude. Moreover, adding a new leaf will only potentially affect the heights of nodes on the path from this new leaf to the root. Thus, in the second phase to restore the AVL property, we will walk back up the tree from the newly inserted leaf to the root and restore the AVL property at any node along the way that has gotten out of balance. Let's say we're walking up the tree from the newly inserted leaf to the root and we come across the first node that no longer has the AVL property. Let us see how to restore the AVL property at this node. It is key to note that since this is the first node we come across that does not have the AVL property, all of the children of this node and their children, etc., will still have the AVL property. The way that we will re restore the AVL property at this node is a general operation on binary search trees called rotation. First, let me say something about our notation for this segment. In the picture here, X and Y are the names of the nodes in the picture and not the key at these nodes as I have used in previous videos. Using X and Y to be the names of these nodes will make it easier to speak about what happens in a rotation. To do a left rotation on node X, we make the right child, Y, the parent of X, and we make the left subtree under Y to be the right subtree under X. So this subtree B here, which is uh, the left subtree of Y, after the rotation, B becomes the right subtree of X. Everything else stays the same. So we can do this rotation with just a constant number of pointer updates. In other words, we can do this rotation in constant time. The other key fact about rotation is that it preserves the BST property. We know that the key at node Y is bigger than the key at node X because Y is the right child of X. So it is fine for X to be the left child of Y as it becomes after the rotation. Also, all the keys in the subtree B are larger than the key at X since B is in the right subtree of X originally. Thus, it's fine for B to become the right subtree of X. Alternatively, if you like in-order traversal, you can see that an in-order traversal of the tree on the left does the exact same thing as an in-order traversal of the tree on the right. An in-order traversal of the tree on the left, we would first print out all the keys in A, then print the key at X, then print all the keys in B, the key Y, and finally all the keys in C. The exact same thing happens on an in-order traversal on the tree on the right. We print out all the keys in A, then the key at X, all the keys in B, 
then the key at Y, and finally all the keys in C. A right rotation is just the inverse operation of a left rotation. If we start with the picture on the right and do a right rotation on Y, then we get the picture on the left. This also preserves the BST property. Now we have this operation of rotation, which we know preserves the BST property. This is what we are going to use to restore the AVL property after an insertion. If we look at the tree on the left, we see that it does not have the AVL property. I've written the heights of nodes in pink above the nodes. Except for the leaves, we know that all the leaves have height zero. Now the tree on the left is not an AVL tree. The only violation occurs at the root. The height of the right child of the root is three, while the height of the left child is one. So the balance factor of the root is two. Now let us do a left rotation on the root. This will serve to decrease the height of the right subtree of the root and increase the height of the left subtree of the root and therefore restore the AVL property. So now when we do a left rotation on the root, the root has key seven. After this rotation, the node with key 10 becomes the root. The left subtree of the node with key 10 Originally, the, the root of this uh, subtree is the node with key 9. That becomes the right subtree of the node with key 7. And now you can see that after this left rotation, we have an AVL tree and we have maintained the BST property. After this rotation, then both children of the root have height two. So this is our first example that rotations can help restore the AVL property. Now let's see how it can be done in general. Let's treat the general situation. There will be two cases to handle. Case one is simpler and is like the example we have just seen. Suppose that node X in the picture does not satisfy the AVL property after an insertion but that both its left and right subtrees do satisfy the AVL property. This is what I mean here by saying X is a minimal violating node. After an insertion, the balance factor of a node can change by at most one. So the balance factor of X is either two or minus two. Just by flipping the picture, we can assume that the right child of X has larger height than its left child. So we're going to assume that the balance factor of X is two. The assumption of case one is that the height of the C tree is at least as big as the height of the B tree. So let HC be the height of the C tree and HA be the height of the A tree. As the height of the C tree is at least that of the B tree, the height of the node at y is 1 plus hc. By the assumption that the balance factor of x is 2, we therefore know that ha plus 2 is equal to hc plus 1. So in other words, this means that ha is equal to hc minus 1. Okay, so try to remember that because that's what we're going to need for the next slide. I claim that to restore the AVL property in this tree, all we have to do is a left rotation on X. Let's see why that works. After a left rotation on X, we have the picture on the right. Node Y becomes the root, and the tree B becomes the right subtree of X. In the picture on the right, the height of the right subtree of Y is simply HC. The height of the left subtree is 1 plus the maximum of HA and HB. Remember from the last slide that we know that HA is equal to HC minus 1. For case 1, we are assuming that HB is at most HC. And because in the picture on the left, we know that node Y has the AVL property, we know that HB is at least HC minus one. 
Thus, HB is at least HA, and HB is either equal to HC or HC minus 1. This means that the maximum of HB and, and HA is either HC minus 1 or HC. So this means that in the picture on the right, the height of the left subtree of the root is either HC or HC plus 1. Either way, we're OK, and we have restored the AVL property. This finishes case 1. Now let us turn to the second case where HB is bigger than HC. First, let's look at an, at an example. In this example, the root again has balance factor two. But what we called HB in the last slide is zero and HC is minus one. So HB is bigger than HC. In this case, we will first do a right rotation on the node with key 10. So after this right rotation on the node with key 10, we have the next picture. It might not be clear what we've accomplished here because the root still has balance factor two. But now we've actually reduced the back to case one. You see that now the right child of the node with key eight has larger height than its left child. So we're back in case one. So now we know what to do. We can do a left rotation on the root and restore the AVL property overall. And you see that this has happened in the third picture. Okay, let's do the general situation of case two now. Again, the setup is that X is a minimal violating node and has balance factor two. Now in case two, we assume that HB is greater than HC. So since node Y has the AVL property, it must be the case that HB is equal to HC plus one. Thus the height of node Y is two plus HC. And as the height of node Y is two larger than the height of the A tree, because we're assuming that X has balance factor two, this means that HA is equal to HC. Okay, unfortunately for case two, we're going to have to look inside the B tree. So here I've opened up the B tree and I'm saying that its root node is Z and the left subtree of Z is D, and its right subtree is E. Now the height of node Z is just equal to HB, and we know that that is HC plus one. So the height of Z is HC plus one. This means that both the trees, D and E, have height at most HC, and one of them must have height equal to HC. Okay, with all that set up out of the way, let us now do a right rotation on node Y. So Z takes Y's place, and subtree E becomes the left child of Y. Okay, now let's focus on the tree on the right. Remember that we just saw that the height of both D and E is at most HC. So this means that the height of Y is one plus HC. It also means that the right subtree of Z has larger height than its left subtree, since the height of D is at most HC. Thus we are exactly back in case one. We can restore the AVL property by doing a left rot rotation on X. Here's a summary of case two where the left subtree of Y has larger height than its right subtree. We first do a right rotation on Y, and then we do a left rotation on the root X. Thus with two rotations, we can fix the AVL violation at node X. We have now seen how to repair the AVL property of a single node with at most two rotations. And so this can be done with a constant number of pointer updates. 
To restore the AVL property in general after an insertion, all we have to do is walk from the newly inserted leaf to the root and restore the AVL property at any node we encounter that is out of balance. So the total time to restore the AVL property after an insertion is just proportional to the height of the tree. As an AVL tree with n keys always has height order log n, this gives us order log n insertion time while maintaining the AVL property. For removal in an AVL tree, we can follow a, sim a very similar process. We remove a key as usual, as we do in the normal BST case, and then we repair the AVL property using rotations just as, just as we have seen. And in that case, we walk along a path from the deepest node affected by the removal to the root. So we can remove a key and maintain the AVL property and time order log in as well. So via this active rebalancing process, an AVL tree can always maintain height order log in and so achieve order log in worst case complexity for all the operations we have seen so far, insert, remove, contains, and successor.